the rain poured down on the party of snotlings as they ran back as quickly as they could to Snotantinople. The sky water was coming down so heavily that Snotius could barely see beyond the next copse of trees. The mutant snotling and his compatriots found themselves fighting their way through thick mud as they raced back to the city. Snotius couldn't get the image of the burrows flooding out of his mind. If he was too late, there was no telling how many snots he would lose in the flooding. The rain slowed their progress, but the scout party eventually returned to a city in crisis. A number of burrows had already collapsed. Snotlings were panicking and running this way and that. Pegleg was hobbling around trying to direct construction efforts. The irrigation trenches were already overflowing their banks as the sky water continued to soak everything beneath it. Snotius sent his lieutenants to start gathering up the snots into work parties. Snotius himself scooped up Pegleg and put him on his shoulders. Oh, oh, oh thanks, boss. Oh, i never been this tall before. Oh, look, I can see over the walls of Snotantinople. What's your plan, Pegleg? Use the building, Snot. How's we gonna fix this? First, we need to get the water out of Snotantinople. We gotta dig the water trench so it takes the water out of the city. Instead of, you know, just bringing it in. Then, we need not underground stuff to live in. You know, like we built the temple, but not so fancy. Right, let's get a move on, you lot. With Pegleg riding on his shoulders, Snotius began barking orders and directing Snotlings towards digging a new trench, while others worked against the elements to construct above-ground dwelling for the citizenry of Snotantinople. Of course, the dwelling of Snotius and his lieutenants were prioritized. In the pouring rain, construction was slow going. The mud made it easy to sink posts into the ground, but they were very unsteady. More than one little hut collapsed on the snots haphazardly trying to build it, but the work was slowly getting done. Some of the snots were likely going to have to sleep under the open air tonight. There was no way to build enough huts while the storm raged. Lightning split the sky as Snotius ran this way and that with Pegleg still riding on his shoulders. It was in that moment, when the snots finished the drainage trench, that the remaining snots turned their attention towards building as many huts as they could before the sun went down. But then, Snotius just happened to look towards the edge of the forest. The wall of rain seemed to abate just a little bit, and the snot boss thought he saw some movement beyond the veil of water. The storm lessened in severity just a little, and Snotius could see one of the most majestic creatures he'd ever seen. It was long-limbed and graceful, with great, long, thin horns growing out of the back of its head and it ran on four hooved feet. Snotius instinctively hurled his spear at it, but it landed well short of the strange creature. There was a sudden peal of thunder, and the creature bolted and vanished quickly into the woods. Snotius had never seen something that he wanted so badly before. But now was not the time. He returned to the task at hand, bullying the snots who were mucking about into getting back to work on the huts. Eventually, the storm subsided down to barely a drizzle. Between snots being trapped in flooding burrows and accidents during construction, six snotlings had died in the storm. At this point, it didn't put much of a dent in the population. More than six snotlings were popping up each day. Snotius was about to head into his brand new boss hut to end his day of labor and spend some time being at least somewhat dry. But then one of the squig farmers ran up to him. Boss, we got ourselves a brand new squig! 
Snotius called Pogchomp to his side to go take a look. It would be good for the squigs to meet. Hopefully Pogchomp wouldn't eat the new squig. When Snotius headed over to the squig pens, he saw an odd-looking creature. It was a little different from his attack squig. It had an enormous nose awkwardly stuck on the front of its face, almost like a Gretchen or a Snotling nose, and it was snuffling around on the ground. It's a squig hound, boss! It can smell stuff and follow it wherever it goes! It just follows the stink of whatever you was hunting! Hmm, that could be useful. I want to catch that four-legged spiky-headed thing or saw out in the rain. Snotius thought for a moment. He should give this hound to Snotbow. He was a cunning sort of snot who knew his way around tracking and being sneaky. He could probably use the squig hound the best. So, the mutant snot boss called on Snotbow. All right, Snotbow, you can keep this squig hound all for yourself. But you gotta do one thing to prove that you is worthy. Do a backflip. What? Do a backflip and you get the squig. Snotbo looked at Snottius like he had gone a little mad. Well, maybe he had. Most bosses were more than a little mad, and Snottius was a mutant to boot. Snotbo shrugged and gave his best effort only to fall directly on his back into the mud. Taking a moment to put his cunning to work, Snotbo decided to try again. This time, he jumped from the top of a rock, and his feet managed to spin all the way around and stick the landing. Snottius then proudly handed the leash to Snotbo. It's all yours. <sighs> Thanks, boss. I think I shall call it Squigarlicus. If Snotius's eyebrows hadn't been burned off, he would have raised one of them at Snotbo's name choice. But Snotbo was a weird snot. Squigarlicus was securely in the care of Snotbo. Snotius decided to sleep in his brand new boss hut. It was nice to be in a proper hut instead of underground in a burrow. Much more proper for a boss. Snotius drifted off to sleep dreaming of that long-legged thing he saw in the storm, and how he might catch it. When Snotius awoke, he went out to see if the new grots had popped up yet. But there was nothing. He was worried. He slew the first grot, and now he was confident that the next ones would treat him as boss, as he was bigger. But what about the other snots? What about Tree Climber? and Snotbow, and Pegleg. When the new Gretchen arrived, would they be replaced? Would they become servants? Would they follow Snotius's path and challenge the new Gretchen to combat, maybe mutating the same way he did? Could Snotius risk their deaths? These were brain-hurty ideas that Snotius would have to deal with soon. But not now. Now he wanted to go find that weird squig thing he saw in the rain. He gathered the same troop together that had joined him in delivering the god box to the bug nest. Redshirt, Meat Shield, Snotbow and Tree Climber along with Squigarlicus and Pogchomp. Snotius wanted to find that weird thing and catch it. He wasn't sure exactly what he wanted to do with it. Eat it? Ride it? But he just thought it was neat. And why shouldn't the boss get what he wants? Snotius stopped by Pegleg to ask him to think of some new ways to throw stuff better. He missed hunting the four-legged horned thing because his spear couldn't reach. He wanted something that could hit things from even farther away. Pegleg nodded, and Snotius gathered his snots together. The troop headed out to the edge of the woods, trying to pick up the scent. There were a few deep tracks in the mud that looked like hoofprints. 
Snotbo and Squigolicus led the way, snuffling this way and that, following the trail. As they went through the woods, the ground became rocky, and the easy-to-follow tracks vanished. Squigolicus had been trained a bit by Snotbo, but the Squighound seemed to be a bit confused. He sniffed in one direction, and then suddenly began snuffling in another direction. I don't know what he's doing. I think he smells something else. Sure enough, a little ways away from the rocky ground, there was soft, swampy ground that was full and wet from the rain the night before. And right there in the mud was a different track, a large claw print in the ground. Oh, that looks right crumpy. I think this is what Squigolica smelled. It looks pretty fresh. Both Pogchomp and Squigolicus began to growl as they both scanned the area. Yeah, there's something here, boss. The snotlings all drew their weapons. Suddenly, a strange creature burst out of the brush to the left of the troop. It was covered in scales, and thick drool dripped from its toothy mouth. It was a huge lizard that was at least twice as long as Snotius was tall. It lunged like lightning at Meat Shield, who held up his little shield to protect himself. But the animal skin did very little to stop the crushing jaws of the creature. The lizard chomped down on Meat Shield, snapping right through him at the waist and devouring his torso in one gulp. Seeing the ferocity of this creature, Snotius leapt forward with the others. Pogchomp and Squigolicus began flanking behind the lizard and snapping at its haunches. Snotius used his spear to keep distance between himself and this fearsome foe as gore dripped from its mouth. Snotius lunged forward and caught the beast in the gut, cutting deeply into it. It growled and hissed and thrashed. The squigs moved in to bite, and the other snotlings took their shots on the creature as well, slashing it with their bug mandible weapons. And when the squigs bit deep into its leg, it cried out. The lizard lashed its tail and head this way and that, swatting the attackers away. Redshirt was caught off guard, and the beast struck him with a vicious headbutt, knocking him onto his back. The lizard then scrambled forward and down on the poor snotling, devouring him whole as well. They couldn't keep taking losses like this. This creature might start killing snotlings that Snottius really liked. This needed to end now. Snottius steeled himself and went in for the kill. He lunged with his spear, trying to drive it deep into the creature's heart. But the lizard was too quick. Its teeth bit down on the edge of the spear shaft and, with a jerk of its head, snapped the spear blade right off. Snotius pulled back to swing the rest of the spear like a quarterstaff and tried to bash the lizard's skull in. But the lizard lunged forward again, knocking Snotius to the ground and scrambling on top of him, scraping its claws across Snotius' shoulders. It was in that moment when Snotius was barely away from death, that his trusted lieutenants came through. Snotbo leapt out from the brush and landed on the creature's back with a cry of, Wah! and stabbed deep into its back. Pogchomp latched onto the creature's tail, and Squigolicus grabbed onto one of its hind legs and began to pull as hard as he could. Tree Climber threw himself forward and took a nasty scratch across his chest. But the loyal snot went for the kill and managed to plunge his mandible dagger into the throat of the monster. Blood spurt from the wound as the creature began to flail. Wishing to escape the sharp claws of the dying lizard, Snotius kicked out from underneath and rolled to the side, causing the creature to roll over onto its back as it continued to bleed from the neck wound. Snotius was breathing hard as he watched the lizard's movements slow and weaken. 
It wasn't long before its blood pooled beneath it, and it gave its last breath before lying still. The snots were bashed and bleeding, but most of them still lived. Even though they had been traitors at one time, Meat Shield and Red Shirts, in the end, gave their lives fighting like good and proper greenskins for their boss. Snotius would remember them. After a brief respite, the remaining snotlings and squigs helped hoist the lizard's carcass to be taken back to Snotantinople, so it could be processed for food and likely some nice armor. It took a little while as the three snotlings and two squigs struggled to haul the lizard back, Hogchomp tried to be helpful by eating one of the lizard's arms, but Snotius told him off as he wanted to use those claws, and they were no use inside a squig's belly. Eventually, the party returned with their prize, and as they entered the walls of Snotantinople, Snotius could see that the time had come, because two freshly sprouted Gretchen were now standing in the middle of the city. Snotius's most difficult decision of his long and storied reign now lay before him. No man do they call me. My mother and my father and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of Growing the Tribe. If you like what you heard, please leave a like and a comment in order to ensure that your old friends will not be replaced by taller, smarter friends that grew out of the ground a few minutes ago. If you are not yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about the legendary rulership of mutant snotlings. If you would like to support me, you can do so via Patreon or PayPal, uh, both of which will be linked below. And if you have absolutely no idea what's going on, you can click on the playlist to hear the story from the beginning, and that should be appearing on screen right now. Thank you all once again for listening. No man out.